I didn't really know anything about fashion. I lived as a kid in Japan and Korea and being surrounded by those amazing cultures, I would like to think that had something to do with leading me to be a stylist. I had a really normal teenage life, music, boys, stuff like that. But then I suddenly discovered magazines and I think that was at about 13 or 14 years old and that really opened up my world. I think it was a world of escapism and fantasy. I was determined to find out how I could make a career out of it and that's when I discovered St. Martin's and doing my degree there. I just remember sitting in the library for hours and hours going through all the old archives of Dutch magazine and Italian Vogue and that's when it really clicked that I knew I wanted to be a stylist or a journalist but somehow forge my career in the fashion industry. When I was working a lot with Hedy Slimane, I mean, I think we all know Hedy could do everything. I remember working with him on a project called Youth in Revolt and it was a cultural landscape of Copenhagen and we went around casting these boys in the middle of the night at nightclubs and it was this whole fantasy kind of fairy tale world of these boys and I remember calling him hoping he would hold my hand through this project but him being so relaxed and loose and that was about it and I mean it was brilliant in a way because I just went off in my own world and really yeah re really lost myself those pictures those portraits of those boys I love that they're, they're some of my favorites Working with Peter a lot later on, when I was a student, I was always looking at his work, always admiring it, how he photographed women, what he, what women represented to him, their strength, and you know, he always wanted them raw. He didn't want to hide who they were. This is a cover I did with Kate and him. Actually, it's the first time I worked with Kate. We got on so well probably annoying Peter. We did incredible projects together. We did this story with Maria Carla on the beach, which was so amazing and felt like the Peter pictures that you pick up and they never ever age. With editorials or celebrities, I really start with a character, uh, forget trends. I tap into be it a musician or film or someone who just intrigues me and that's normally where my body of reference and research starts. Another memorable moment was being fashion director at Holiday Magazine, we did the Japanese issue. Josh Olins and I went to Japan for I think it was 48 hours. I used to live there as a kid and we took Edie Campbell who's one of my favourite models to work with and we had like it was amazing we had 48 hours to pull off the shoot it was so intense and so stressful and brilliant at the same time as much as we tried to be organized we weren't and we were in the back of a van with the clothes stopping every moment to do a picture it, it was really really one of my favorites I started to feel disconnected slightly from the fashion industry. I had been looking outside the industry for things that inspired me, one of them being the environment, nature, and I realized, you know, working in the industry and being so aware of the waste and realizing that the responsibility was on me or all of us and having, having something that aligned with my values. I think was so important that I felt that I could do something or give something back. And that's where Relux came about. I've always shopped vintage and pre-loved, but I started to feel like a lot of these models were looking like fast fashion, where it's all about buy, 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 and you're fire hosing the consumer with just tons and tons of product. I wanted a completely different resale proposition. I wanted one that it was a truly luxury experience for the seller and the shopper, and Relux is the antithesis of that. 
using my level of expertise as a fashion editor, I really wanted it to be about this curation. We don't take anything, but we do choose things from, I don't know, a Prada highly collectible dress or a Phoebe Celine piece to an acne white shirt. It's not about it being elitist, it's about the curation, the content, the consideration and the community. It's about the perfect mix. We have amazing women who have supported Relux. We launched with Amber Valletta, we had Zinnia Kumar, Andrea Dekanu, Edie Campbell. They've all been huge supporters. The great news is that the demand for sustainability is really high and the consumer is demanding them, but our industry has so much potential and so much responsibility. It's almost the forefront of conversations and I think businesses are under a huge, huge amount of pressure to align themselves. As a customer, a consumer, you do need to watch where you spend your money. Looking at these companies, are they really being transparent? The benefits of buying pre-love, you save money. You know, you can buy into brands that you might not necessarily be able to afford. You won't look like everyone else. You're buying pieces that might not exist anymore, or you're just not buying a complete look. And then obviously it's better for the environment. Take your time doing it, don't rush it. And once you get used to buying it, it actually becomes really addictive and a way of living, contributing, etc. It's a different mindset.